Hello students, in today's topic we will be studying frequency response analysis that is Bode plots. Now by frequency, by the term frequency response I mean the steady state response of a system to a sinusoidal input. Now mostly all industrial control systems are often designed by using frequency response analysis. Now in this what we do is we apply sine wave input to a stable linear system and the output will also be a sinusoidal wave with the same frequency but the only difference between the output and the input will be both in the magnitude as well as the phase angle. Now for example in the for, for the first order system that is for first order that is y s upon x s we have first order system as 1 upon tau s plus 1. Now if suppose the input is of this nature a sin omega t we know that the output is also sinusoidal nature and the response of the output to this input for the first order system is a upon tau square omega square plus 1 sin of omega t plus pi. Now the difference between input and output is that of the amplitude and that of this phase angle clear. Now For frequency response analysis, we basically be dealing with two terms, one is the amplitude ratio and the second one is the phase angle that is phi. Now what is amplitude ratio? Amplitude ratio is nothing but the ratio of output amplitude to the input amplitude. Now for this input system, we have this output system. Now for this output system, this term that is the term present over here is the output amplitude and the input amplitude is A. So if you take the ratio, so the amplitude ratio is nothing but 1 upon under root of tau square omega square plus 1. That is the amplitude ratio and phase angle is your phi and in case of first order system it is tan inverse minus tau omega or we sometimes also write it as minus tan inverse tau omega clear. So this is for the first order system. Now if suppose we have a second order system for the second order system if uh, the transfer function is tau square s square plus 2 zeta tau s plus 1. Now to this particular system again if the input is of nature a sin omega t and we have the output which is somewhat a upon under root of 1 minus tau square omega square whole square plus 2 zeta tau omega whole square that is this thing clear into sine of omega t minus omega t plus phi where our phi is nothing but minus tan inverse 2 zeta tau omega over under root of 1 minus tau omega whole square that is this thing. Again uh, if we take the amplitude ratio in this case that will be nothing but the output amplitude towards the input amplitude so it is 1 over under root of 1 minus tau square omega square whole square plus 2 zeta tau omega whole square that is this thing and uh, the phase angle is represented by this term clear now similarly for any any order higher any higher order it can be third order it can be fourth order it can be of any uh, higher order uh, for frequency response analysis we need to have the two terms one is the amplitude ratio the other one is the phase angle clear now there is a very simple alternative way of how to calculate the amplitude ratio and the phase angle directly without uh, going for the Laplace inverse of that particular system. That simplified method is known as your substitution method. Substitution method. Now suppose how does the substitution method works? Okay. Now in the substitution method what we need to do is we are going to substitute uh, your S as i omega will substitute s as i omega in any given transfer function 
and try to convert the transfer function in the form of a plus i eta b. Once we have in the term of a plus i eta b, then the amplitude ratio is nothing but a square plus b square and the phase angle is nothing but tan inverse b by a. That's the that, that's how the substitution method works. Now let me take an example over here. Uh, let's take an example of first order system because we know the results. So let's take an example of first order system. Suppose our first order system is 1 upon tau s plus 1. Now in the substitution method we say s equal to i to omega. So put s equal to i to omega. So what we have is uh, tau into i to omega plus 1. Clear? So which is 1 upon 1 plus i to tau omega. Now we, uh, we have this thing. Now we can uh, fra rationalize this thing. So 1 minus tau omega and 1 minus i to tau omega. So we can write it in terms of so this can be written as 1 minus eta tau omega over tau square omega square plus 1. So which is nothing but 1 upon tau square omega square plus 1 minus eta tau omega over tau square omega square plus 1 or we can take plus and let's take minus sign with this. Now this is in the form of a plus eta b, right? So let's calculate the amplitude ratio then. So the, then the amplitude ratio is nothing but under root of a square plus b square. So put the values of a and b. So what you have is nothing but 1 upon under root of uh, tau square omega square plus 1. So we have tau square omega square plus 1. And phi is nothing but tan inverse uh, b by a. So this becomes minus tan inverse tau omega. Clear? So this is how your substitution method works. So for any given system, we can calculate the amplitude ratio and we can calculate the phase angle by substitution method. Now let's suppose uh, if suppose we have a, a transportation lag. If we have a transportation lag, that is my yt is not but x times t minus tau omega. Right, so we are given uh, that x t is a sine omega t, so it will be our y t. So our y t will be nothing but a sine omega. Okay, omega can be taken out. Let me take omega right out. So it can be written as omega times t minus tau. Let me write it clearly over here t minus tau clear uh, or, or we can write it as a sin omega t minus omega tau so if this is the output this is the input so what's the amplitude ratio so amplitude ratio is 1 and phase angle is minus omega tau clear now uh, remember this, this uh, phi equal to minus omega tau, this, that's in radians. So we can put back into your degree. So pi by, sorry, not pi by, it's 180 by pi into 180 by pi. So it becomes minus 57.29 omega tau degrees. So that's your phi. So remember, wherever we have transportation lag, the amplitude ratio is always 1 and phase angle is always represented by phi equal to uh, minus 57.29 omega tau. Moving further, now why we are calculating amplitude ratio and phase angle? Now let's come to board a plot. Now basically, uh, yeah, our Bode plot, a Bode plot consists of two plots. One is its amplitude ratio versus frequency, that is omega, and the other one is phase angle versus frequency. Now you can clearly see 
the amplitude ratio for second order system or even for higher order systems you can clearly see for the amplitude ratios now for the uh, first order system ar is a dependent upon frequency that is omega for given value of tau similarly phi that is phase angle also depends upon frequency second order systems again it depends upon frequency plus at the same time it depends upon the damping factor and the phase angle also depends upon the frequency and the damping factor clear uh, for transportation lag ar is independent of uh, the frequency but phase angle does depend upon the frequency so that means for the bode plot we need to uh, it's basically a plot between the amplitude ratio and frequency and the phase angle versus the frequency now the first graph that is amplitude ratio versus frequency it's always plotted on log log graph whereas the phi versus frequency is always plotted on semi log semi log means uh, obviously one of the axes will be your log that means y axis is a log axis and simple axis is your x axis it's a semi log graph clear uh, let's uh, study the bay plot now for a first order system for a first order system we have uh, amplitude ratio as upon under root of tau square omega square plus 1 and we know phase angle is minus tan inverse omega clear now take log on the both sides of this amplitude ratio so what we have is log of ar is equal to minus half log of tau omega whole square plus 1 can we write this thing yes now if omega tau approaches 0 if omega tau approaches 0 what do we say we say that ar approaches 1 because omega tau is 0 so that means log of 1 so log of 1 is uh, log of x equal to log of 1 so what is x x is 1 so ar approaches 1 so this condition is known as low frequency asymptote it's called low frequency asymptote second is if omega tau approaches infinity if omega tau approaches infinity that means this equation reduces to log ar equal to minus log of tau omega that is equal to that is this can be written as y equal to mx straight line with a slope of minus 1 clear so this condition is known as high frequency asymptote low for low frequency asymptote that is for low frequency asymptote ar approaches 1 when omega approaches 0 and for high frequency that is when frequency approaches infinity Uh, our amplitude ratio basically becomes uh, linear with the uh, frequency with a slope of minus 1 clear so let's if if we if we plot this thing on a log log graph paper now suppose if this is the graph and obviously the both the axes are log log that means for on a log graph paper let's suppose these are certain ranges of the log graph paper that means if this is zero uh sorry if this is 0.1 this can be 1 this will be 10 and this can be 100 similarly this can be 1 this can be 10 and this can be 100 that's the log log graph paper and on the log log graph paper let's suppose this is the omega tau and, and that's the amplitude ratio now for the low frequency asymptote if omega approaches 0 that means for this values for lower values of frequency ar approaches 1 that means ar is 1 that is this thing that's the low frequency asymptote we can write low frequency asymptote 
for higher values that omega tau approaches infinity that is for higher value the high frequency is in total is somewhat a straight line with a slope of minus 1 with a slope of minus 1 so that's a high frequency is in total and we have a low frequency is in total now if we connect both high frequency and low frequency if we extend high frequency and low frequency what do we get now if we extend high frequencies and if we extend a low frequency is in total they meet at a single point and that single point is known as corner frequency remember that that's known as corner frequency whose value is written as omega c which is equal to 1 by tau which is equal to 1 by tau because tau omega approaches 1 so that's the frequency where we have a corner frequency now further uh, so this is your uh, low frequency is not that a high frequency is not and they meet at a single point that single point is known as corner frequency now uh, suppose if we plot the true value this is basically the asymptote plots now if we plot the true value now i'll explain how to plot a true value later on now suppose if we plot a true value curve true value curve of first order so that true value is basically represented by this uh, line that is blue line so it normally represented by something like this okay uh, let me correct it uh, remake it it's normally re represented as something like this now what do we see is uh, when we now this is your actual plot now i'll explain uh, in the, in a bit how to plot the actual plot now in the actual plot and in the asymptotic plot the high, the biggest variation occurs at corner frequency so the variation occurs at corner frequency now corner frequency is 1 upon tau so if we now for first order system amplitude ratio is 1 upon under root of tau square omega square plus 1 so if we put uh, if we put omega c equal to 1 if we put omega c equal to 1 if we put uh, sorry omega c is equal to 1 by tau so what does ar approach is ar approach is 0 0.707 value clear that means the actual value the actual value corresponding to this is 0 0.707 and in the asymptotic value this value is 1 so that means there is an error of uh, less than there is an error of uh, less than 30 percent there is an error of 30 percent because the asymptotic value is 1 but the true value is coming out to be 0 0.707 so there is a difference so there is a difference between the uh, actual value and the asymptotic value and that difference is always is less than 1 so uh, and over here the maximum deviation between the actual curve and the asymptotic curve occurs at corner frequency corresponding to corner frequency so for engineering analysis or for design specs uh, if the error is less than 30 percent it, it's it's acceptable and uh, so we can uh, truly represent the graph by the asymptotic values rather than going for the true curves rather than going for the true curves clear so for any system we can actually plot the body plot by just representing it by the asymptotic values clear now moving further moving further uh, this is how uh, now how to now the question is how to plot your true values okay for true values it's a very simple thing now we know that our amplitude ratio is 1 upon one upon under root of tau square omega square plus one clear and we have a log log plot now if you see on the log log graph there are hardly few values where which we can consider now let's suppose if this is tau omega and let's say the minimum value is 0 0.1 1 10 and 100 correspondingly again on the y, y axis we also have the same values let's suppose uh, that's point 0.1 1 10 and 100 clear now 
what is for different values of tau omega we can calculate different values of a yeah. so what you need to do is you don't need to go for a good values from 0.1 to 100 what you can do is you can pick up any four values let's say 0 0.1 1 10 and 100 that is corresponding to these values now for these values uh, correspondingly put these values in this formula over here and calculate ar let's say ar is 1 0 0.707 and then 100 100 uh, 100 under root 0 0.1 that's 0 0.1 and then it's 0 0.001 let's suppose these are the values so what you do is now you plot the actual value for corresponding to 1 ar is 1 that is somewhere here for 0 0.1 it's 0 0.7 so 0 0.7 is somewhere here for 10 it's somewhere here and for 100 it's somewhere here so that's the plot that's the plot clear so this is how you can plot your true values so which is represented by this blue line clear or I ideally just remember that is for first order system the asymptotic plot is represented by this line that is for asymptotic plot I'll show the asymptotic plot in this graph the asymptotic plot is represented by something like this it will start from one reach a point and it goes down so any graph Bode plot which is represented by this is your first order system is your first order system so that is the log log graph of amplitude versus frequency now let's go back now let's come back to your you know phase angle versus frequency now for phase angle for phase angle for first order system we know that phi is equal to tan inverse tau omega minus tan inverse tau omega now for different values of omega for different values of omega now if omega tau approaches 0 phi approaches 0 and if omega tau approaches infinity pi approaches minus 90 degree so that's your low frequency so this is your low frequency asymptotes uh, low frequency plots and that's your high frequency plots so if you see uh, the maximum value will be minus 90 and the uh, minimum value will be zero so if you plot for this thing on a semi log graph zero towards minus 90 so this will be the value so this is how the phase angle versus frequency for a border plot of first order system look like clear so remember the shape if this is the shape that's the first order system and phase angle is represented by this value so you have depending upon different values of omega and tau uh, you can have different values of uh, this frequency so it's a inverse sigmoidal shape plot the maximum value will be minus 90 now for the second order system I'll just directly plot the values of uh, how does the Bode plot and phase angle uh, is shown so you can calculate this uh, sorry you can calculate your amplitude ratio and phase angle by substitution method clear now for uh, second order system the border plot i'll plot a border plot over here and frequency plot also side by side the phase angle plot now in a second order system it depends the plot depends upon another factor that is damping factor clear for different values of zeta for different values of zeta to zeta tau s for different values of zeta the plot shape will be different clear so generally this is for zeta equal to 1 this will be zeta greater than 1 
clear and if you have a bell shape something like this thing so this is for zeta 0.1 zeta 0.5 something like that so the more the bell the lesser the value of zeta so it's a dome shape for zeta less than 1 that is amplitude ratio versus frequency similarly for the plots for phase angle versus frequency it ranges between 0 to minus 180 and somewhere in the middle let's say we have minus 90 so for zeta equal to 1 the value is something like this equal to 1 for zeta greater than 1 th these will be the values zeta greater than 1 and for zeta less than 1 so it will be something like this more values so zeta equal to 0 0.1 and this can be zeta equal to 0 0.5 0 0.5 sorry I'm written 5 it's 0 0.5 zeta equal to Point clear now moving further for a transportation lag now for a transportation lag we know uh, for a transportation lag uh, we know the transfer function is uh, e is minus tau s so the amplitude ratio is 1 and phase angle is minus 57.29 omega tau degrees so the amplitude ratio is so the border plot for amplitude ratio frequency is nothing but a straight line that is ar equal to 1 at ar equal to 1 whereas for phase angle versus frequency that is uh, phi versus omega tau we have a plot something like this clear between 0 to minus 270 degrees that's for transportation lag now, now for controllers okay for controllers let's say the first controller is RPI controller now for PI controller the transfer function is y s upon xs which is kc 1 plus 1 by tau i s plus 1 now using substitution method that s equal to i tau omega s equal to i tau omega so we can clearly calculate ar and pi now i've ca already calculated the values of ar and pi so ar is ar comes out to be kc under root of 1 plus 1 upon tau i omega whole square and phase angle is tan inverse 1 upon 1 upon tau i tau i omega clear and the border plot is omega versus tau omega tau versus ar let me write ar by kc so i've taken the kc value on the other side so it is somewhat like of this shape clear and phase angle versus frequency so it will be between 0 to again minus 90 now it's of this shape so remember the standard shapes between uh, phase angle versus uh, border plots for uh, your PI controller. Next we have PD controller. So for PD controller the transfer function is KC 1 plus tau ds. So using substitution method you can calculate the amplitude ratio and phase angle which I have already calculated. So for PD controller amplitude ratio is KC under root of 1 plus tau D omega square and phase angle is 
tan inverse tau d omega tau d omega clear now the plot ar versus frequency so the plot is somewhat the shape and phase angle versus frequency between 0 to positive 90 so this shape so somewhere here in the middle we have 45 degrees clear so that's your pd controller then comes the third type of controller that is pi d controller the transfer function is kc 1 plus tau ds plus 1 over tau is so using substitution method put s equal to eta omega so we have amplitude ratio and frequency so amplitude ratio in the this case comes out to be kc under root of tau d omega minus tau i omega whole square plus 1 and phi is equal to tan inverse tau d omega minus 1 upon tau i omega at the phase angle. Now Bode plot. For Bode plot let us say frequency we have amplitude ratio. Now for Bode plot it is a combination of pi and pd. So for pi this is the plot and for pd that is the plot. So these bends are your frequencies. So this can be 1 upon tau i and this can be 1 upon tau d clear and frequency phase angle versus pi versus frequency. So that will be between minus 90 to 90 and somewhere in the middle we have 0 that is again a sigma del shape clear so this is the these are these are certain standard uh, plots for controllers now there is one more important controller which we forgot over here that is proportional controller proportional controller anyone any guess for proportional controller Now, transfer function of proportional controller is Kc. So, what will be the amplitude ratio and phase angle? This is the only controller which do not have Bode plots because there is no dependency of any parameter upon frequency. So, it is independent of frequency. So, amplitude ratio and phase angle for proportional controller we cannot make. So, there is no you know Bode plot for proportional controller. Now, suppose the question comes how do we plot for a system where we have uh, multiple series of uh, transfer functions. Suppose uh, we have a transfer function G total as G1, G2, G3, G4 and so on. Clear? So then remember this thing that for amplitude ratio total will be amplitude ratio of 1 that is for this thing into amplitude ratio of the second into the amplitude ratio of the third into the amplitude ratio of the fourth. So for amplitude ratio total that means the amplitude ratio of the individual transfer functions they get multiplied whereas phase angle total is nothing but phase angle of the first transfer function plus phase angle of the second transfer function plus phase angle of the third transfer function and plus phase angle of the fourth transfer function gets added up. So that means remember this overall amplitude ratio is the product of the individual amplitude ratios and overall phase angle is the addition of individual phase angles clear. So with this uh, thing just remember that uh, you, we need to just remember the standard shapes of Bode plot for first order system, for second order system, for controllers, for transportation lag, 
and if we have any new uh, transfer function available first first thing is we need to use substitution method and get the overall amplitude ratio and overall phase angle then only we can plot their Bode plot now in the next lecture we'll take an example of this Bode plot so if you have any query you can ask me through the email id thank you so much